Rock Nation, it's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be doing a part two of Auto Hockey version two uh, showcase video. If you guys haven't seen part one, definitely check that out. Uh, I think there's going to be at least three parts uh, going through just this website. I plan to do more uh, in the future, maybe with GitHub uh, showcasing and stuff like that. So if you have any recommendations, definitely let me know in the comments below. Some great V2 scripts you've seen out there. Um, and yeah, uh, you might also notice I am on the opposite side of my screen today. That's because I need to be able to show you some stuff that's going to happen over here. Um, so that feels a little weird to me. I'm also in full screen on my desktop. Uh, I usually don't record that way because it's a little bit harder to sometimes read the text and whatnot if you're not on a computer. If you're watching it on a phone, it's a little difficult. Um, but for showcasing, it just makes sense, so bear with me. Um, yeah, so the first one, um, I'll obviously have the link to this page in the description below. Uh, we've already gone through quite a few of these just on the part one of this video. Um, so here we are, as uh, where we left off. We're doing minimize window to tray menu. Um, so you just click the show code. Uh, it's going to get it. You just copy and paste into whatever editor you're using and save it as an auto hotkey uh, file. Um, so I've already done a lot of that. Um, so here's the first one. Um, a few things to point out as far as code changes go to adjust it to your needs. Um, this is the maximum number of windows allowed to be hidden, which is 50. I mean, if you're hiding 50 windows, that's a bit absurd. Honestly, you, I wouldn't even worry about you ever hitting 50. If you are hitting 50 and that's an issue, uh, you might want to think about maybe closing some stuff down. Um, the hotkeys by default are Window H and Window U. Uh, H is to hide, U is to unhide, makes sense. But you can change whatever in these print, uh, quotes here to F1, F2. Um, for example, if I did like F1 or whatever, you can do that and it would work just fine. Alright, don't know why everything just went red there. That was a little weird. Um, so let's go ahead and run that script. Make sure it's running. There it is. Um, so basically what we can do is we could open like a new window here. Um, so we have this window. I want to hide it. I can just do window H and boom it disappeared normally you would come down here and you could see it in there but it's not actually in there that blank window it's not showing up here that's because instead of hiding there it's actually being hidden in the actual uh, auto hockey icon over here and so you just right click on it and there it is the new tab so i can click on that to unhide it it comes back now for some reason you close the script um, it will automatically unhide those for you, so don't worry about if you accidentally push exit, it does unhide all. Um, so once again, you can put up to 50 in that list. It's just a nice way if you want to save it maybe like uh, for later, but you don't want it junking up your main area, you can have it kind of like hidden on a side area for a later use. That's at least how I would use it, is like future uh, project windows that I don't want to junk up my bar down there. All right, so the next one up is this one, uh, changing message box button names. Um, let's get that one up. Let's close our old script here. And so this one's actually a very simple script. Um, you can change the button names uh, basically on a timer. Uh, so for the sake of this video, I have it at five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds, just so you guys can see it uh, from the first change to what it becomes um, so it by default it's going to be yes or no um, but we want to change it to do add or delete instead so that's what we want it to change to so this script's super easy let's go ahead and run that run in v2 obviously and so there you go you see it's that yes and no button but here in a few seconds it is going to uh, change to that add and delete which there we go add and delete and that's pretty much it um, not really 100% off the top of my head can think what I would use this for um, if you guys have ideas of where this could be implemented let me know uh, it could be like a timer of like hey why are you taking so long just so you know something's about to happen please choose a new option or something 
um, you know, maybe like a timeout sequence or something. That's all I can really think of. Now, the next one, unfortunately, I can't really show you because I do not have a keyboard like this. So I'm going to show you an image here in a second. Um, this is the numpad 000 key. This is basically a key that comes on certain keyboards or extensions to your keyboards. So down here, so mine just has uh, a big zero right here. Um, but this one comes with zero or three zeros. So this is just a way to reassign that zero, zero, zero key basically to whatever you want. Um, so in here, um, here's what it is. That's the key it's looking for. That's that zero, zero, zero. And it's just watching for you to press it. And then down at the very last line of code right here where it says send, you can change it to um, whatever you want it to be. Maybe it presses space, enter, or triggers a whole bunch of commands instead of just zero, zero, zero. Like maybe it enters a formula. Uh, it's really up to you. Um, so yeah, that one's cool, but I can't unfortunately, uh, truly show you that one because I do not have the ability to. All right. And next up, we are going to be doing the using keyboard numpad as a mouse. This was a cool one, very interesting. Um, let's look at the code on that one real quick. Uh, so we'll jump over here. And this grip is actually like pretty insane because if you go through, it's over 800 lines of code. And this thing, it took some work for sure. Now, read a little more in depth. The big part of the chunk at the first part here is just kind of an explanation of what keys uh, do what kind of movements and how to adjust some stuff and there's a lot of information here to go through but simply put instead of using my mouse it's going to let me switch my num uh, pad whether it's built into your keyboard or a side uh, usb one it's going to make it so your mouse can move around so let's see that one in action so we're going to launch that make it launch yep so right now i'm going to use my gnome pad um, I'm just going to push some buttons on it, and as you can see, um, it's just doing its default uh, movements here with the arrow keys with the num lock off. Um, but what you got to do is push scroll lock. Uh, you can change this, obviously, if you want it to be a different type of hotkey, uh, but we'll push scroll lock. And now I'm going to go ahead and start, and you can see my mouse is moving around. So I'm pushing 2 to go down, 8 to go up, 6 to the right. By, uh, four to that side and then we can also use the 971 to go diagonal which is really cool this could be used for like video games for precision stuff maybe uh, or in an emergency if your mouse breaks and you need to shut down your computer or do something um, you know whatever uh, zero is going to be a click the delete button is going to be right click and then five is basically uh, mimicking your middle mouse button um, so this is really cool, but there's more to it than what I just showed you, so definitely read through. Um, and then once you do, uh, you can push scroll lock again and just go back to your default movements there. Uh, oh, wrong button. Scroll again, and we go right back. So it's easy to switch between just normal functionality and the auto hotkey scripts functionality, which is really cool. I really like this. Um, I definitely see this being used uh, as a really nice precision or emergency tool. Um, for helping you guys out. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, if you guys like these kind of videos, definitely hit the like button. I plan to do uh, a few more of these uh, pretty soon, actually. Um, and like I said, if you guys have any recommendations on V2 scripts that I'm not showcasing in part 1, 2, or 3 of these videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. All right, next up is just called Seek. Uh, search the Start menu. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just a basic uh, search function for your computer for looking for programs. Uh, the code on this too is uh, pretty impressive uh, for what seems like such a simple script. It is about 400 lines of code. Uh, really, honestly, there's not much you need to change in this unless you want to add a hotkey because by default it does not have one, I believe. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like one. So that way, if you want to have it running at all times and always have it launchable, uh, you can just simply, uh, probably like, I don't know, just really anywhere. You can just be like, you know, F1. Now it has a hotkey. Um, so let's launch that. And here's what we got. 
uh, and actually saved what I searched for the first time I used this, which is pretty cool. Um, but it basically works like your Windows search, but it's a little bit more robust. Um, so I can look for like Notepad++ right there. You can open it, open directory if you want to go straight to the folder, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we can also sit there and, um, you know, let's say like I, I want to open Edge for some unknown reason. Uh, you just click open and yeah, it just runs it. Real easy, real simple uh, to use. So this is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, that's basically all this does. But for how simple it is, it's a very powerful tool. It's really cool. Uh, it's great for searching. Um, from pretty much anywhere. Even when you're in like a video game, you can press, if you add a hotkey, you can press F1, and this will just open, versus you having to Alt-Tab out of it with two keys. One key is always going to be better, but hey, it's up to you. All right, let's go ahead and make sure that shut down. All right, next is the tooltip mouse menu. This is a cool one. I've seen a lot of programs like this. I've actually done videos where I show you how to uh, do stuff like this, um, but this one I'll showcase because it's useful in case you don't want to make your own, which is what my previous video based off something like this does. Uh, so right here, uh, you can change the menu title to whatever you want it to be. So if you want it to say like, uh, you know, gaming or whatever, you can put that in there. Uh, default is just a bunch of equal and minus signs. Um, and then from there, uh, the menu items, you know, you put uh, whatever you're going to be adding. Essentially, it's kind of like a right click, uh, but with your specific programs, uh, you do need to go down to where it says menu selections, create and edit the menu selections here. Uh, so you see, uh, we do have the default of like notepad, and that's just going to be a run command, run notepad.exe. Uh, some programs, depending on what it is, you might have to put the full file path here. Um, with the name of the executable at the end of the file path in order for it to run. You can also, as in C, uh, section 3, 4, and 5, this is just opening a message box to let me know I select it. So it doesn't just have to run a program. It could perform, like, send commands, uh, pretty much anything that auto hotkeys can do, you can make it do. Um, like I said, I've done videos on how to make some very robust versions of this, so definitely if you want to see that, check those out. I'll try to find that uh, video because I can't recall what it's called off the top of my head. Um, and I'll add it into the description once I find it. Uh, so let's see this one in action. We're going to go ahead and launch that. And this one is triggered by just holding down the mouse button. Um, so I'm clicking the mouse button. So clicking doesn't work. What this is designed to do is to let you have that functionality of your middle click. But if I hold it for a few seconds, let go, now it's going to appear. So I like that because it lets me have my normal functionality, but then I can expand to have this functionality with just the exact same key, which is really uh, cool. So from here, you know, you just select your menu item. Uh, this is a simple tooltip, so it's just meant to be simple, easy, and clean looking. So I can click calculator. Voila, it did that run command right here for the uh, calculator. So that worked out pretty well. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about what I've showed you so far in this video, uh, definitely let me know in the description below. Sorry, I keep having to look behind my camera to see where I'm clicking on my screen because it's at the bottom there. Um, so yeah, uh, part three will be coming out very shortly, uh, probably in the next like two to three weeks. Uh, part three will be out. Uh, that pretty much will finish what's left on this site so please if you guys have scripts that you want to share that are written in v2 uh, definitely let me know i mean even if you have v1 scripts you want to share i do still plan to do some v1 videos because there's still a ton of people who uh, plan to keep using v1 don't really want to upgrade um, but a lot of times my older videos obviously before v2 was a thing they were all v1 but then in that transition, a lot of my videos were both V1 and V2 showcases kind of being mixed together. But from here on out, all my uh, showcase videos will specifically say this video is all V1 scripts. This video is all V2 scripts. So I will be separating those from now on just so you all know. And uh, yeah, definitely subscribe if you want to see more like this. I have a whole playlist of showcase videos not just about auto hotkeys, but even other programs, languages, 
uh, like Python and stuff. I've done showcases for those. And if you guys want to see me expand outside of the auto hockey showcase world, let me know. Uh, maybe I'll throw in my uh, community tab just asking what kind of showcases would you like to see just outside of auto hockey? You know, maybe you want to see some more Python or maybe even a language I have not yet done on my channel. Um, so definitely look forward to that. Uh, after, maybe a day or two after this video releases, I'll put that poll up and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, everybody, I want to thank you all for watching. See you on the next one.